my name is Patricia and this is my lovely assistant Mercy. She's going to be our yoga model. Um, you probably won't, um, I used to a very traditional and classical style of yoga. The tradition of yoga that I follow is actually an adaptation of Mr. Bikas Ayenga's tradition of yoga. So we focus on functional yoga. So little micro movements and heavy focus on alignment so that you can actually use all of this in your daily lives and not just for some cool poses or complicated poses that you see on Instagram. You've probably grown up practicing yoga in school so for you this is going to feel really familiar but we're going to really focus on micro movements and the alignment is going to be modified for everybody that needs special considerations if you have problems with your back or knees we'll also modify for that so we'll start in Sukhasana and we're going to do alternate nostril breathing or Nadi Shodhana as you know it we're going to curl our forefinger and middle finger, extending all other fingers, and press our thumb to our right nostril, inhaling through the left nostril, pausing at the top of the inhale, and switching to the ring finger over the left nostril, exhaling through the right nostril. And we'll continue like this for about two minutes. The advantage of Nadi Shodhana is that it balances out both your energies and the body-mind connection. It is a really good way to start your day and a really good way to start your yoga practice. It grounds you, it calms the mind. And having said that, in the tradition of yoga that I practice, we don't focus on the cessation of the fluctuations of the mind as is taught in classic yoga by the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. Instead, we actually embrace the way that our mind and our body co connect with each other. And while you're here, inhaling through alternate nostrils, feel the difference in when you're inhaling from one nostril as opposed to the other. Also feel into your body how the sensation of the breath traveling through your body. Slowly return back to the, your normal rhythm of breath, lowering your hand back down to your knees. And we're going to start the class by chanting OM together. So we'll place our hands together in front of our heart. 
and we'll inhale together and do three chants of OM after each inhale. So let's start with the inhale. your eyes and we're going to start still in Sukhasana so this time we're going to cross our legs in front with our shins parallel to each other and our heels in line with our knees so if you move your shins further forward like just the shins on so if we slide our shins further forward until our heels are directly in line with our knees. It's not your usual cross-legged position. It is a little bit awkward, but it gives you a solid foundation to start with. So we'll start with a few cat sitting cat cows. So we'll start inhaling, lifting up through the chest, expanding, opening up, exhale, round your back, tuck your chin under. Inhale, lift up through the chest. Exhale, round your back, tuck your chin under. And we'll do about five of these. So with each inhale, as you open up, feel the space you're making in your spine, the way your body moves. And with each exhale, round your back, tuck your chin under, feel how your spine changes both shape and it moves within your body as you inhale really fill up the front of the body exhale round your back tuck your chin under and one last one inhale lift up through the heart through the chest opening up exhale round your back and tuck your chin under on the next inhale come back to a neutral spine And we're going to do a little bit of a forward fold. So we're going to start lifting up through the heart with an inhale and walk our fingertips forward. Keeping a long spine. So try not to round through the back to start off with. Find your limit before you reach, before you start folding forward. So get to that point where your back is still straight and your shoulders are coming back. So if you rise higher than you think you need to, find that limit to start off with. We're going to breathe for about half a minute in that position, allowing your body to start softening before you move forward. So while you're here, anchor down in through your hips, allowing your hips and legs to get really heavy rolling your thighs out to make space for your spine. And with each inhale, fill your back body with breath. With each exhale, soften through the legs, allowing them really to open up, make space for you. And with each inhale, you really make space through your whole body, opening up, particularly through the back. As you exhale, you're allowing every part of the foundation to lower and get more solid. Once you feel your body beginning to open up through the hips, you can start walking your fingertips forward. Just like Mercy is doing, very slowly coming forward. And bearing in mind that your sitting bones don't come up. Remember, you don't have to look the way Mercy looks. So if Mercy goes the whole way down, that doesn't mean you have to go the whole way down. 
you can choose to stay at your own limit. And if you remember you were super flexible when you were young and you don't feel the same way anymore, don't worry, it is a slow process to go back to that flexibility. You may not, not reach your ideal flexibility, but you will improve your flexibility day by day. As you well know, yoga is a process. It's not a destination, it's not a goal. And you have to embrace the process and be patient with your own body. As you inhale, you fill up through the back once again, expanding. And as you exhale, you allow your back to soften, your spine to soften, the areas around your hips to soften. For some of you, your head will not reach the ground. So you can use a block to help yourself. Where you can rest your head. You may use more blocks. So right now I'm going to demonstrate for mercy. So you can rest your head and keep your neck soft. We hold a lot of tension in the neck. And as you can see, Mercy's shoulders and neck relax and then her arms relax. That allows a further opening through the back. Once you feel that your body has opened up and relaxed through the back, you can start by opening up through the sides. So as you lift up once again, slowly through the chest, walking your hands back until they're below your shoulders. We're going to turn to the right, straddling your right knee with both sets of fingertips. And walk your hands forward, extending up through the spine keeping a long spine until you reach your limit. Once you're at your limit, stay there once again, breathing in through the left side. So you can probably see and feel an asymmetry in your body here. So you'll need to walk your right hand further forward towards your left hand and your left hand further to the left. And you'll feel that now you're not quite above your knee, so you'll need to turn your ribs to face your right knee. That's it, that's perfect. So when you do that, you'll be in a slight twist. You'll be extending through the left side and you'll have a diagonal stretch happening through your back. Once again, once you feel your body beginning to open through here, you can start coming down full over your knee. And as you can see, Mercy is beginning to lower through this part, resting her head on the blocks. While you're here, you can inhale through the back, relax through the shoulders, relax through the neck. And give yourself enough time in this section. You can pause at any point in the video if you wish to give yourself more time. We will spend about 30 seconds here, allowing your body to open up. And with each inhale, you'll direct your breath down through the left side, just like you did when you were breathing through alternate nostrils. And as you exhale, you'll soften your whole body in that direction. Remember to keep 
your neck soft, your shoulders soft. And remember that this is your foundation where your legs are right now. So imagine your thigh bones opening up from the hip sockets, rolling open while you're in this position. It will make it a lot easier to keep this position for a longer time if you wish to do so. And on your next inhale, we're going to start walking our hands back under our shoulders until we can stack our shoulders over our hips. We change the cross of our legs so that we don't get any pooling of blood and pins and needles. And once again, we ensure that we have our shins really further away from our hips, our feet flexed, and our heels in line with our knees. Once again, turn to the left and straddle your left knee with both sets of fingertips. That's it. And once again, as you inhale, you extend up through the heart, keeping a long spine to start off with and focus on your alignment before you bend forward. So you walk your right fingertips a little bit further to the right and your left fingertips a little bit in that direction. That's it. Turn at the ribs so your heart is facing the knee and allow your body to open up slowly. So as you can see, Mercy's walking her feet forward really slowly. And I'm not, and you can adjust the block for any height. I'll keep it on the highest setting right now, which is one stacked over the other in that direction. And you can see how Mercy's neck has relaxed, her shoulders have relaxed. Her spine relaxes with, with each inhale. You feel back through every part of your lungs, every part of your waist. And as you exhale, you allow your hips to open up. And you can stay here for as long as you want. You can pause the video at any point in time and give yourself more time. But if you only have half an hour a day, then just continue with the length of time that we're using. On the next inhale, we're going to start walking our hands back under our shoulders so we can once again come upright. And we'll do a couple of side bends. So for those of you who won't be able to reach the ground with your forearms in a side bend, you can place blocks at the right distance from your body. So we'll start by placing our fingertips on either side of our hips. Lift your right arm up to the sky. Walk your left fingertips over to the left until your forearm reaches the ground. If your forearm can't reach the ground, that's when you use your block and place it underneath so your forearm can rest on that. Now, as you can probably see, Mercy's hips beginning to come up. So you'll need to ground down through the right hip, lift up out of your left shoulder and turn your heart up to the sky. We bring our cheek up to our raised arm. So you're not actually using your head to lead. You're lifting up through the heart, extending up to the sky. And with each inhale, you feel the right side of the body. With each exhale, you soften through the left side of the body, keeping the alignment strong. 
So as you see, Mercy's elbow comes up, so I'm going to allow her to rest onto a block. This allows Mercy to have a strong foundation for her shoulder without actually dumping any weight onto it. On her next inhale and on your next inhale, we raise our right arm back to the sky, stacking our shoulders over our hips and lower the fingertips to the ground. And lift, lift your left arm to the sky and walk your right fingertips over to the right. And once again, I'll set up blocks to rest your forearm on the side. You lift up out of our right shoulder. You turn your heart to the sky. You grind, you're grounding down through your left hip. Allowing your body to open slowly. So as you inhale, you fill the left side of the body. And as you exhale, you soften through the right side. And once again, remember that we tend to lead with our head. So let's bring our left cheek up towards our left arm. This allows your head and your cervical spine to be in line with the rest of your spine and prevents any neck injuries or any soreness of the neck when you're working later in the day. In the next inhale, lift your left arm back up to center, lowering it down to the ground. And as you exhale, center back. So from here, we're going to go to all fours into tabletop position. So we're going to tuck our toes under and walk our toes back until our knees are a foot behind our hips. And keep our shoulders stacked over our hands. This is going to be our starting position for downward dog. So as we inhale, we lift our hips up to the sky, keeping our knees bent to start with. Extending through the spine, and then push your hips up towards the sky, lift up through the armpits, roll your biceps open. Check your own hands. Make sure that your fingers are spread wide, that you're pressing every single knuckle into the ground. And as you exhale, extend your heels towards the ground. If they don't reach the ground, that's okay. They don't have to. When you feel that your back is beginning to round, you back off and you bend your knees a little bit. And we start to pedal through our downward dog to move through the range of movement in our hips, our calves, and once you feel that you've worked out the kinks in your back, you come back to stillness, roll your biceps open, make space. So you roll your biceps from the center out, up and away from your head. So it's an external rotation of the biceps. And as you see that opens up. Mercy's shoulders, it'll open up your shoulders as well. And on the next inhale, we come forward into plank. As you can see, Mercy didn't have to adjust her feet. That's where we started so far back. On the exhale, bend your knees and lower down to the ground. So as you progress back in your routine in yoga, you can do a full lower down in plank. But until then, we just bend our elbows and come 
down onto the ground. Extend your toes back behind you. Bring your hands outside the mat, level with your shoulders. We're going to start by planting our hands firmly on the ground. Every single knuckle on the ground, your fingers spread, your forefingers pointing forward. And you're going to roll your biceps open. As you can see, Mercy's shoulder blades come together. They slide down her back and on the next inhale, she lifts her head and heart forward coming into Cobra. With each inhale, she squeezes all her muscles into her bones and with each exhale, she pushes down through her pelvis, back through the tops of her feet and extends up to the crown of the head. Once again, with each inhale, you pull all your muscles into your bones. And with each exhale, you extend back through your toes, up through the crown of the head. On your next exhale, you can come back down to the ground. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Slide them lower, level with your sternum so that when you tuck your toes under and push back to downward dog, you are already in alignment. So tuck your toes under. Push yourself back to all fours to start with. And then lift your hips to the sky. So you're used to moving a lot faster than this when you were in school learning this probably. But right now we're going to start really slowly, letting your body adjust to every single movement and allowing your brain to integrate the movements again. So once again, roll your biceps away from your head and extend down through your heels, lifting up through the hips, keeping a long spine and a little lower back curve. On the next inhale, we step our right foot forward into a lunge. Check that your right knee is directly above your heel, so it's a right angle. Squeeze your legs into the middle, lift your hips up so that you're nice and buoyant through your back leg. Shift all your body weight onto your back leg and then stack your shoulders over your hips. And once again, inhale, squeezing all of the muscles into the bone and squeezing your legs into the middle. And as you exhale, you push down through your feet and back through your left heel. On your next inhale, lift your arms to the sky, coming into crescent lunge. As you exhale, once again, push down through your feet. Inhale and squeeze all your muscles into the bone, your legs into the middle. And as you exhale, push down through your feet, reach up through your fingertips, extending your soul energy up through your fingertips, down through your feet. On your next exhale, lower your fingertips to the ground and your back knee to the ground coming into Anjani Asana. Squeeze your left hip forward, right hip back. Keep your back toes tucked. And on the inhale, lift your arms once again to the sky, joining your hands together. As you exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Inhale and rise up through the spine. And on your exhale, turn to the right, tucking your left elbow over your right knee. Inhale, extend up through the crown of the head. Exhale and turn through the ribs once again, lifting your heart away from your knee. Inhale and squeeze your legs into the middle. Exhale and soften through the spine, soften through that diagonal that you're twisting. Make sure that your foundation is nice and strong. So keep on squeezing your right hip back and your left hip forward. Keep on pressing down through your right foot. 
On your next inhale, lift your chest back up and on the exhale, turn back to center. Lower your fingertips to the ground. Plant your hands and step your right foot back behind you. Coming back to all fours. Slide your hips back, tucking your toes under and lift back into downward dog. Once you've reached your downward dog, walk your toes a little bit further back so you can step your left foot forward coming into a lunge. Check that your left knee is directly above your heel. Squeeze your left hip back, creating a tension in your right hip forward. Lift up through your hips, making your back leg really buoyant. And as you exhale, push down through your feet and back through your left heel. Imagine there's a wall back here. So I'm going to place my leg here and let Mercy push into my leg. When you see that, you see that her legs, her leg muscles are activating. As you inhale, stack your shoulders over your hips. Exhale and push down through your right foot, back through your left foot. Inhale, squeeze your legs into each other. Exhale, push down through your feet. And on your next inhale, lift your arms to the sky. Inhale, squeeze all the muscles into the bone. Exhale, push down through your feet. On the next exhale, lower your arms down. Releasing through the arms. And then lower your fingertips to the ground. Lower your back knee to the ground. Squeeze your left hip back, right hip forward. Keep your toes tucked. In fact, that's going to protect your knee. Inhale, sque squeezing your legs together, stacking your shoulders over your hips. Exhale, soften through the shoulders. And on the next inhale, lift your arms to the sky. Keep squeezing your left hip back, right hip forward. Bring your hands together. Lower your hands down to your heart. As you exhale, inhale, rise through the crown of the head and on the exhale, turn to the left, tucking your right elbow over your left knee. On the next inhale, rise through the crown of the head, lengthening through the spine. And on the exhale, turn your ribs a little bit further to the left. Inhale, squeeze that left hip back, right hip forward. Exhale, push down through your feet, extending up through the crown of the head. On your next inhale, lift your chest, and then exhale, turning back to center. Lower both sets of fingertips onto the ground, and step back to downward dog. Come forward into plank. Lower your knees to the ground. And then lower your whole body to the ground. Point your toes back behind you. Bring your arms alongside your body. As you inhale, lift your shoulders up and back, squeezing your shoulder blades together. Press down through the tops of the feet. Press down through your hips as you exhale. And on the next inhale, lift your heart forward and up, looking forward. Coming into Salambhasana, Locust Pose. And as you're here, with each inhale, you lift your heart higher. With each exhale, you press down through your hips, down through the tops of your feet. Squeezing your legs together. Exhale and lower back down. Slide your hands until they're next to your ribs, supporting you. Tuck your toes under and push yourself back to downward dog.
Walk your feet forward, keeping your knees slightly bent. Place your hands on your hips. Keep a long spine, squeeze your shoulder blades together, and on the next inhale, come to standing with a long spine. Wonderful. Now open your feet as wide as the mat, sliding your toes outside the mat, but keeping your heels inside. Bend your knees, letting them track over your toes. Squatting as far down as you can come. And I'll show you the three stages. So Mercy can probably go the whole way down, but you can rest your hips onto a block if you need it. If you don't need it, I'll move it away from Mercy's hips so you can come further down. Bring your elbows inside your knees, bring your hands together. So you were probably used to doing it a lot deeper with your knees closer together and your feet closer together, but we're going to start like this. And we're going to hold this for quite a few breaths. So with each inhale, feel the back of the body and with each exhale, let your hips get heavy. Make space in your spine every time you inhale. So you rise up through the crown of the head and with each exhale, you allow your hips, your legs to get heavy. And you can be here for as long as you need to. Right now we're going to be here for about five or six breaths. But if you feel that your calves are really tight, you can stay here for longer. On the next exhale, lower your hands to the ground. And if you can, sit back onto your hips. If you can't, come to it through the sides. So bring your knees together, plant your hands behind you with your fingertips pointing towards your hips. Walk your feet slightly forward until they're at a, almost a right angle. So if you bring them a little bit further back, that's it. And walk your hands a little bit further back, so about a hand span away from your hips. And we're going to go into reverse tabletop. So when you inhale, lift your hips up. Roll your thighs in and down, extend out through the knees. The more you extend through the knees, the easier it becomes to hold the pose. If you can't hold it for very long, we can lower back down to the ground and do this as a dynamic pose. So once again, press down through your feet to start with. As you inhale, lift up through the knees, through the hips, extending your knees forward, pressing down through all the knuckles of your hands, and on the exhale, lower back down. So we'll do three of these in total. Inhale and lift up through your hips, through your knees, extending back through the knees, lifting up through the hips and as you can see with Mercy she's distributing her weight equally exhale and lower back down so from here we're going to stay sitting down lower your upper body to the ground keep your knees up slide your feet closer to your hips and place them on the edges of the mat. So you're going to open your knees quite a bit. Open your arms wide at the height of your shoulders and lower your knees to the right. Coming into Swastikasana. So in Swastikasana, you allow your whole body to relax. You feel the front of the body with breath. And you just allow the exhales to soften every part of your body that feels tight. And you can be here for a minute or two minutes 
however long you want, you can pause the video and stay here. You're in this open twist, so make sure that when you're here, you don't have a pet bouncing on top of you. You may have your kids bouncing on top of you, but that is difficult to prevent. And as you can see, the angle of the legs is quite different if you bring your knees closer or your feet closer. So please keep your, your feet as a starting position on the outer edges of the mat. On the next inhale, bring your knees back to center. And on the exhale, lower them to the left. Be gentle with yourself, especially if you're just returning back to yoga. Remember, every single day is different. Some days you wake up more flexible, some days you wake up with tighter connective fibers. And there's a layer of connective tissue that envelopes each of our muscles called the fascia. And the fascia runs all the way from the crown of your head down to your toes. And every day you grow a new layer of fascia. And the only way to break down that fascia is to move. And that's why you feel tight in the mornings, because you've grown a few layers of fascia overnight. However, we need the fascia because it holds everything together. Even our heart tissues grow fascia. On the next inhale, bring your knees back up to the center. Slide your knees together, your feet together. Lift your shins up, squeezing your legs together. Flex your feet and then lower both knees and shins over to the right. So coming into an easy twist. Now you'll notice the difference in this twist to swastikasana. And we start with swastikasana so that you start opening up through that side of the body, through the diagonal. And you can stay here for 30 seconds or two minutes, however long you want. On your next inhale, bring your knees back up to center. And on the exhale, lower them to the left. Ensure that your knees stay together and that they're at the height of your hips. Again, the angle is quite important. You're reaching into different parts of the body, different muscle groups different parts of the fascia and you're relaxing different parts of the body. Now our body is actually like a huge camera. It records everything we've seen and experienced and felt. So as you're here, you might find that some of the aches that you hadn't noticed before are there, that bits of your body are feeling tighter. You might even have a couple of memories bubbling up. This is all because your mind and body are one. Everything you felt, thought, heard, done through your whole life has been recorded in your cells. So be gentle with your body. It's had to deal with a lot. So as you inhale, lift your legs back to center. Extend your feet out up to the sky. And lower them slowly back down to the ground. Bend your right knee, bring it in towards your chest. And then place, sorry, 
place your hands interlaced behind the hamstring. Stretch your right leg up to the sky. And if this angle is not available to you, you can slide your hands lower down your hamstring and bend the knee slightly, flexing through the foot. If that's already beginning to activate your hamstring, that's great. So for me, it's more important that you feel this as opposed to you having a straight leg. Now Mercy can access her hamstring so she can stretch it the whole way. And on her next inhale, and your next inhale, we're going to lean our right leg over to the left. Place your left hand over the thigh and re relax the right arm down to the ground. Keep your right foot flexed and keep digging down into the ground with your left heel. Think about your left thigh while you're here. Roll the left thigh in down towards the ground. As that happens, you'll see that it extends and that you have a really solid foundation for the pose. On the next inhale, bring your right leg out, lowering your left hand to the ground and reaching for your leg with your right hand. So you're reaching for your right thigh, bringing it your leg wide open only as far as your body allows. So not everybody can reach the ground. So some of you might want to have a block or if it doesn't even reach the block that's still okay. Don't let your hips come off the ground. So your left hip stays on the ground. It's one of the reasons that you have something to prop your leg onto. On the next inhale bring your leg back to center. Release your arm and lower the leg back down. Inhale and lift your left leg up. Interlace your fingers back behind it and stretch your leg. Once again, remember that you don't have to have a straight leg. You can bend it like Mercy is doing, just so you can access your hamstring and lower your hands down past the middle of the thigh. As Mercy can access her hamstring, she can extend her leg out. And we should never have mentioned pets bouncing on you. On the next inhale, look at me. place your right hand over your left thigh, leaning your leg over to the right. Yep, I've got you. Flexing always through that left foot. And on the next exhale, lower your right hand to the ground. Opening up through the left side. And as you can see, Mercy's leg is hovering in the air. If you have a block, you can place it below the foot so that it's resting on the foot, on the block. On the next inhale, bring your leg back up to center. Lower your leg to the ground. Now bend both knees, lift your feet up, but keep your knees bent coming in towards your chest. Reach for the inside arch of your both feet with both hands and open up into happy babies. So you may or may not be able to access it as deeply as mercy. If you can't access it as deeply as mercy, just grab onto the inside of your calf. And we rock from side to side, really slowly, 
press down through the back of the skull to keep a long cervical spine and slowly come back to stillness. Bring your knees back together, your feet back together. Release your arms, stretch your legs out. Slide your hands next to your body, flipping your palms to the sky. Close your eyes and come into Savasana, your final resting pose. And you can stay here for at least five minutes, integrating the whole day. Savasana is the most important part of your practice. It allows your body and mind to integrate everything you've done. It also allows for the recovery of the tissue.